Hey y'all, this is Jamie. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I am going to be doing a try on swatches and review of the ColourPop Heart of Gold Super Shock Shadow Vault. But before we get into that, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Give this a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> First off, check out the shirt. The only one that's missing is Mulan. And I don't know why Mulan is not in here, but I got this back in like March, April for my Disney trip. Isn't it cute? Etsy. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the only one, oh, and it doesn't have Moana in it either. Moana and Mulan, I think, are the only ones that are missing. All right, so. Let's get into this. I'm very excited. So ColourPop recently collabed with Disney again. They have done that quite a few times and I think they even now have, I think when I'm filming this video it hasn't come out yet, but I think by the time this is uploaded it will. I think they now have like a Tinkerbell collection. They came out with these Super Shock Shadows, one for each Disney princess, and I'm really excited about it because I love their Super Shock Shadow formula. I love Disney princesses, so why not? So in today's video, it's pretty much just gonna be like a swatch video, and then I'm gonna give you some of my final thoughts. I'm pretty sure that this vault is still available. So yes, this vault is still available. It is $62, this is actually an $84 value, or you can get the individual shadows for $7 each. So in today's video, I am going to be doing not only swatches on my arm, but I'm also going to be showing you eye swatches. So for each shade, I will first show an arm swatch and then I will show the eye swatch. So let's get to it.
those were the swatches. Now let's talk about this as a product, what I liked, what I didn't like, favorite shades, least favorite shades, and such, and if I think it is worth purchasing. So as far as the Super Shock Shadow just as a formula, I did notice that there was a difference in the texture in how the shadows felt kind of shade to shade. There were a couple that felt kind of scratchy and then there were others that felt almost like a cream shadow. So the ones I definitely noticed feeling like almost a cream shadow were this one, this is under the sea, the aerial one. This one, like the most out of any of the rest felt like a cream shadow. What was the other one? I forgot what the other one was. So there was definitely a variation in what the shades felt like. Um, I don't know if that's true for Super Shock shadows in general. I've only tried a couple of them. So now let's talk about my least favorite shades and my favorite shades. So this came with 12 shades and it looks like I have six favorites and six least favorites. So let's talk about my least favorites first. One of the reasons why some of these were my least favorites is just because of personal preference as far as what kinds of shades I like in an eyeshadow. So some of these, it's not necessarily that they didn't perform well, it's just that it's not my preference when it comes to eyeshadow colors. These were the six that I was not a huge fan of. Actually, the first three. So I'm Wishing, which is the Snow White shade. This one was very much like a white base with kind of a pink duochrome, but I'm not a huge fan of white eyeshadow. I don't think it looks great on me. The next one up was the Moana shade, and that one I actually didn't mind. I just think that there were other shades that I liked better. This is the one, How Far I'll Go. It was the second shade. It's like a really cool toned bronze, like a bronze taupe almost. And I actually, I didn't mind this shade, but I know I probably won't wear it very often. Um, but I do think it's pretty and it performed well. And this one right here, this is the Belle, the uh, Beauty and the Beast. And I thought it was a little too, I guess it was appropriate because I was thinking it's a little too yellow of a gold shade. So I like more of a mustardy gold shade, whereas this is like more of a legit yellow gold, which makes sense because her dress is more of a yellow gold. It has a bit of a pink duochrome to it as well. But I don't know, again, it was just a little too light of a, it seemed a little too yellow um, for me to want to wear. So the next one that I wasn't a huge fan of, and it, it kills me to say this because not only is this my favorite Disney princess, I've said several times before on my channel, my favorite Disney princess, but it's also typically my favorite shimmer shade. I've said several times on my channel that I think every eyeshadow palette should have a good bronzy or coppery shimmer shade. This was gonna be this one's, but I was just a little underwhelmed by it. So it's the Pocahontas Colors of the Wind. I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan of it. It's up here. I think they could have gone darker with it. Maybe you can maybe you can build it up, but it just seems a little too light and not vibrant enough. And the next two were the more bluish shades. I'm not a huge fan of blue. So this one is the Arabian Nights, the Jasmine shade, and then the A Dream is a Wish Your Heart makes the Cinderella shade. The Cinderella shade, that definitely is more of a is a blue that pulls very silver, which again, that makes sense. It's perfect for Cinderella. Um, I feel like that's the color that you associate with Cinderella is more of a like silver undertoned blue, not a favorite of mine. Um, and then this is more of a teal, which again makes sense because that's more the shade of Jasmine's outfit that she always wears. I will say this was another one that wasn't as vibrant as I thought it was going to be and that I thought it should be. And then it looks in the pan, like it looks like it would be super vibrant. You like get it on and it's not, <laughs> it's like not at all. So here, let me just swipe. To see, I feel like that just doesn't coincide with what it looks like. I would say probably out of all of these, this was my least favorite. That one and the Beauty and the Beast one. Beauty and the Beast one, I just really didn't like that color. So my favorite shades are my favorite, mostly because of the colors 
of this so it's not as much how they performed but i love the colors of these other six i feel like they are shades that you might not have in your collection already which i think is always a plus when you are buying a new eyeshadow so y'all probably know if you've been watching my channel how big of a fan i am of green as a color as an eyeshadow color just overall so it's probably no surprise that the two green shades in the palette were some of my favorites so this is the one, this is the Under the Sea, the Ariel shade. I thought it took, definitely took a lot of building up. I was hoping that upon first, like, that it would look like this, but it didn't really, as you could probably tell on my eye swatch. All of my eye swatches, that was me going in three times. The same with the swatches on my hand. I went in, did three swipes. I liked it on the eyes. I thought it could be like a slightly more vibrant but i still really liked it and i just love that color just in general i want i want something in that color the other green shade was the princess tiana the down in new orleans shade which i love i just love a nice Ooh, and i'm just now noticing this shade is duochrome and it has like little purple speckles in it and then the other one is kind of like a turquoise i guess like a green blue and this is the touch the sky the merida shade that's funny because it actually looks a lot greener in the camera than it does in real life like when i look at it it looks very blue but on camera it looks very green the other three are kind of pinky purpley peachy shades so i really loved the princess aurora this is called once upon a dream it's a color that i don't know that i've ever seen before oh this might be the one that also feels like a cream shadow super pretty this one right here is the reflection this is the mulan shade i was a little surprised i don't know what i thought they would do i think maybe i thought they would have more of a red for mulan this one oh it was this one yeah, it was the Mulan shade was the other one that felt like a cream shadow. I still think I like the Aurora one better. So if you're going for like a pink shade and you want to know which one to get, I think I personally like Aurora a little bit better than Mulan. Um, and I think it performed a little bit better than the Mulan shade did. And then probably my favorite shade out of all of these, it's the one that I have on my eyes right now. I say my favorite because I think this is one of the most wearable shades. I do like some of the other colors a little bit better, but as far as what I feel like I would wear on an everyday basis, it is the Rapunzel Tangled I See the Light shade. So the ones that feel like a cream shadow are I See the Light, the Rapunzel one, the Mulan Reflection shade, and then the Under the Sea Ariel shade. I wish that y'all could see it up close because it's so pretty and I think this would look really pretty on top of other shades. This almost seems like a topper shade. I don't know if they do that for eyeshadows. Maybe lay down like a matte shade first, some kind of purple or pink shade, and then put this on over top. Yeah, I just think it's so pretty. I I love that like ethereal look. So my recommendations if you're just going to buy them individually um, are I See the Light, Under the Sea, Down in New Orleans, Touch the Sky, Once Upon a Dream, and Reflection. My top ones are probably I See the Light and Once Upon a Dream. I would definitely go for these two if you want something, if you want something vibrant, if you want something like a little bit different. I would recommend these. I don't know that I would recommend getting the vault unless you are a collector and just want these as a collector's item. So it does come looking like this, super cute. I think that if you want to put this on display, I would recommend kind of punching this plastic part out because they definitely stay in here on their own. You don't really need that in order to keep them in the box. Um, I mean, you can go like this and they'll, they'll stay in. They kind of snap in. So I really don't think that you need that plastic covering. Kind of that's all the Disney princesses kind of sketched out um, on the side, kind of etched out on the side. And then on the back we have all the Disney princesses kind of labeling all of them, the shade names and such, um, Heart of Gold 
It has heart of gold on the side, so if you wanna put this as kind of like a book, I think that would be really cute. So if you want to have it as a collector's item, um, I definitely think it's worth it. It's really cute. It would look really cute on display. I would say the only one that I didn't think performed well was the Arabian Nights, and then uh, I'm wishing the Snow White one a little bit. Those two you really had to build up. Sorry, I just wanted to pop back on here because I did pop the little plastic part out. This was what was inside. It was pretty easy to pop out, so it looks nice. Doesn't have that reflective plasticky-ness. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. Turn that notification bell on so you can receive notifications every time I upload on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, give this a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Leave down in the comments anything else that you would like to see on my channel. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, y'all.